This is the EcoWorthy 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery with 150 amp hour storage capacity, Bluetooth, and a full metal case. This case is very heavy duty, very sturdy, just like what you'd see on a server rack battery. The handle on the top here is just like the kind of handle you would see on one of their server rack batteries. It's also very heavy duty, which makes me wonder what's different on the inside uh, that may be very heavy duty as well. Uh, it did come with this piece of paper here that talks about a fixture on the inside that keeps the cells from swelling. So I'm interested to see what that looks like. I'll be opening this battery up in here in just a few minutes. Uh, let's just take a quick look at the battery. So front here just has basic information, has low temp char charging, Bluetooth, metal case, 150 amp hours, which is 50% 50, 50 more than what you would normally get in one of these batteries in a standard battery. And one big difference, of course, is the terminals are on the side instead of the top which is different. This is a pressure relief valve down here in case something abnormal happens to the battery. Um, so on the back here we have same same stuff here, some tips and cautions, and then the full list of specs which I'll put on the screen and pause if you want to take a look at those. And everything else is pretty much standard. Uh, this I, there, I don't think this is sealed. I'll, I'll be opening this up in a minute to see, but I doubt this have, has any kind of water rating. If it does, I'll put it up on the screen, but I don't think this has any kind of waterproof rating. Here's a shot of the top of the battery. It's mentioned the handle already, and then we have some uh, QR codes here, one for support and the other one that uh, you, where you can download the mobile app, which I'll be showing you as well, and then like the MAC address of the, the BMS on the inside. So I just wanted to quickly mention some things that came in the box other than the battery. Uh, we have the mobile app manual here, how to use that. I'll be showing you that later. Here's the user's manual in a couple of languages. English is one. I believe the other one's German. Uh, we have this little piece of paper here that talks about some specifications and some return instructions on the back if you need to return it. Uh, and as I mentioned already, they're about to keep the cells from swelling, a little fixture inside. I'll be opening it up and showing you that in a minute. Uh, I have this little protective cover here on the negative side only. Now, I'm not sure if I just knocked off the positive side and can't find it, I'm not really sure. Maybe it came with it. Uh, here we have uh, some M8 terminal studs and some protective caps. Once you install the cables, cables, uh, this will keep you from touching the terminals. Here are the physical specifications of the battery. Uh, it weighs 41.01 pounds. It's 11.2 inches tall, 12.3 inches in length, and 7.9 inches in depth. Before starting the battery capacity test, I checked the shipping voltage. EcoWorthy shipped this battery at 13.1 volts, which is perfect. I then fully charged the battery. During the battery capacity test, I was drawing about 10.1 amps and estimated that it should take about 15 hours to run overnight. After about 14 hours and 41 minutes, we reached full capacity of 150 amp hours. We still have 12.4 volts remaining in the battery, which is plenty to continue. So let's just see how far this can go. At just under 16 hours, the battery finally depleted for a total of 164 amp hours. That's terrific. That is 9% more than rated capacity. The watt hours came in at 2095 out of the rated 1920 watt hours. So the battery capacity test is a pass. Okay, getting ready to start the max load test. Uh, the equal ba eco worthy battery says it will handle 120 amps continuous and up to 130 amps uh, for 10 seconds. But I noticed that the amp reading here is a little on the low side. So what I'm gonna do is establish a baseline here. Um, let's see, I'm gonna turn on one side of my oil heater on the floor. And let's see what this goes up to. And I'm gonna show my mobile app here on the screen. And as you can see, it's a little higher, 62.54. So I'm going, and, the, and that monitor there was showing 60 or 61. So let me use my Klein tools clamp meter here let's see what it says all right it is showing 62.1 so this display here is just a little low all right so let me crank this thing up so we're gonna go by the mobile app amperage it's showing a hundred and I'm using the wrong side now here we go, 122 we're showing. So I'm turn it down just slightly. Nope, that went the wrong way. Go back down. Here we go. So we... Okay, I have this right at 120, just a little bit over. Let's run this for 10 seconds.
Okay, that was no problem. So let me see if I can crank that up. Maybe get that to 130. Okay, it's at 131. And it turned off, just like it's supposed to, just as advertised. Okay, so after about 15, 20 seconds, the BMS turned back on. And now I'm going to run this for five minutes at 120 amps. So let me kick on the oil heater. Let's pull up the mobile app. Let's zoom in here. Mobile app showing right at 120 amps. So let me start the timer. And let's go for five minutes. Okay, it's been five minutes. You turn off the oil heater, turn off the heat gun, and no problem running this for five minutes, 120 amps. I was checking the heat over here on this battery. This little right, crimp right here is a little warm, but everything else up against the battery is cool. I felt all around the battery, it's all cool. So that is a pass. So why might someone want a metal case on a battery like this? Well, first reason would be enhanced safety. Lithium iron phosphate batteries are already inherently safer than lithium ion batteries due to their chemical composition. But a metal case like this offers another layer of protection. In case in the remote chance of something goes wrong on the inside of this battery, this metal case can help protect and spread from spreading fires. Uh, heat dissipation is another reason. Uh, metal casings can help dissipate heat generated during the charging and discharging cycles, uh, potentially improving the performance and the lifespan of the battery. Uh, then there's structural support. Uh, the metal case provides a rigid structure, uh, helping to hold internal battery components together and preventing them from shifting or being damaged. And of course, durability. Metal cases are just more robust and they can withstand physical impacts and vibrations and other forms of stress that could damage a plastic case. Then there, and lastly, there's electromagnetic shielding. Metal casings provide some degree of an electromagnetic shield, uh, which can be important in some applications. While Metal casings do offer these advantages. They can also be heavier and a little more expensive than the plastic case. But for applications where safety, durability, and longevity are very important, the benefits of a metal case often outweigh any drawbacks. So I'm getting ready to open this battery up. Uh, it looks like there's just like three screws on each side and on the ends there's two screws. So this should be one of the easier batteries I've ever gotten into. Okay, I got the screws out. Let's see. Oh, that just came right off. Okay, good. Okay, the first thing I see here is the QR code that seems to match what's on the lid right there. I'm assuming that's the, uh, yeah, download the app and the MAC address of the BMS there. All right, let's see. Um, just at first glance, I, I'm really liking how these wires are all protected like this and keep anything from accidentally touching, it's protected there. Um, let, me, let me take the camera off the tripod here and see if I can get a better shot. Okay, I've taken the camera off the tripod. Hopefully I'm not too shaky. Let's check here, see for tightness. I just pulled this off here. Tight. Yeah, everything's good and tight. Let's check, see what kind of BMS we have here. See if I can get this put aside. Okay, I believe that's a JDB BMS, that DP 4 s 7 I'm pretty sure it's a JDB BMS. If not, I'll put it up on the screen. So, okay, so I want to get down and look at these cells. And it looks like, in order to get this thing out, I'm going to have to take these terminals completely off. So, let me see about doing that. So, this battery, to get these, these cells out, they have these four screws here holding it in. And they're big, long screws go all the way down to the bottom of the case. I'm assuming there's a nut at the bottom that's welded to the case. Let's, let's see. Okay, so this is proving a little more difficult to get out than I thought. Uh, it, the, it, the pack won't just slide out after I took those long bolts out. Uh, as you can see, it's banging against these, um, where the, the lid screws in here. So, and I just, it just won't fit. So I'm gonna have to take this uh, entire BMS off. So let me do that. All right, I got the pack out of the case. It wasn't easy. I had to take the BMS completely off and disconnect everything. So let's start with the case. All right, 
So in the case we have the expansion relief valve there, they've got a big blob of glue on there to hold that thing in. We have the uh, where the screws, little I guess little nuts down in there, uh, those big long screws actually right here they are. Sorry about the zoom. Yeah, they go have they held the pack down in place real good. And this card here we saw earlier, the uh, anti-swelling fixture. There it is. It's an all-metal uh, fixture here with screws and these little metal straps here that holds the cells tightly in place and then those big long screws held it down to the bottom of the case which is very nice and secure. All right, I mean what else we have here so I've already checked the leads here they're all tight. Um, we have laser welded bus bars and we do have even though the uh, anti the uh, anti-swelling fixture is there we do have these ex on the laser welded bus, bus bars here, we do have this little hump that allows the battery to uh, expand if it needs to, even though this is supposed to keep it from happening, this fixture. Let's see, what else? We have the little, I forget what these are called here, but they're in case the, battery, the, the cells need to vent, uh, they're not being covered. Uh, I checked everything, it's tight. Let's see, what else? Oh, here's one temperature sensor which is currently disconnected, but it's not quite touching the cell. It's just off the cell. I'm sure that would work, but I would rather see it actually glued down touching the cell. Uh, QR code. So I will, here's the QR code. I will put that up on the screen. See what I found here. I believe it's unknown cells made in June of last year. And that's about it, I believe. Um, other than the temperature sensor needing to be glued down, I'm going to have to connect all this back up to test the low temperature and high temperature protection but I'll have to put it all together uh, good build quality other than that one thing I mentioned okay now I'm going to do the low and high temperature test I've had to uh, partially leave out the BMS and that board there so I can get to the temperature sensor which I've had to completely disconnect so I got room to test here uh, it well it's, it's connected to the BMS but it's not glued down to the cell anymore so I have the power supply here that I'm going to put a little few amps into it and then I'm going to test it with this cold pack here and then the heat. All right, let's get started. Let's put a few amps in here. Let's say, let's go up to round, round five there. All right, so we're putting amps in. Let's check the cold temperature here. I'm going to start trying to do this instead of the air, upside down air spray because this is more accurate. The other one, it can get way below zero, that upside down uh, air, air uh, cleaner. So let's see, when that should drop out here any second. And there it goes. Okay, so it dropped out. Good. Now, let me warm it up. <laughs> My fingers aren't that warm. Let me try the other hand. It should come right back in. And there we go. All right. Now let's try the heat gun here. Put it on low. And let's see. Yep, that's plenty hot. Okay, we're at five amps. Let's give it just a few seconds here. It should drop out again. There it goes. All right. Now this hand's cold, so let me warm it. But I mean, cool it back down with this fingers. All right. And there we go. We're back to charging. So low and high temperature. Testing works perfect. For some reason, my screen recording did not work on my phone. So here's a screenshot of the mobile app with the low temperature um, warning on the screen. And then here's the uh, high temperature. Okay, I've already showed you a little bit about the mobile app, but uh, here it is, the EcoWorthy mobile app, and no account was required to add the battery. Once I add the battery, with that plus in the top right, you just click the battery, and let's connect to it here. As you can see, it just shows basic information. 92% state of charge. The current voltage, amps being used or charged. Uh, total power down below, standby. The battery status will say standby or charging or discharging. Remaining battery capacity in amp hours. Remaining working time estimate. And if the temperature is normal or abnormal like we did in our low and high temperature. If you go testing, if you go to the battery tab, I mean the data tab, sorry. 
some of that same information that you saw on the first screen, but you can see on this screen uh, how many cells, and then click that, and you see that all the cell voltages, one through four, and they're all 3.33, which is good. And then the only other thing here we have is a notification tab, which I showed you earlier, which shows the uh, the errors or any warnings that's going on, like the low temperature or high temperature. And that's about it for the mobile app. It's a pretty good mobile app, it's basic information, but it works. This eco-worthy battery with the full metal case is by far the most rugged battery I've ever tested. The cells are packed in there together tightly with an anti-swelling fixture, and then the entire fixture uh, is bolted down to the bottom of the case. Those cells aren't going to move at all. The capacity was also excellent at 164 amp hours out of a rated 150 amp hours. It passed all my tests and the build quality is very good. However, I can't say it's perfect because if you remember the cells are unknown so I can't speak for the reputation of the cells. But I didn't see anything that alarmed me at all. They seem to be new and in good shape so uh, and EcoRally does state that those are grade A cells. The other thing I wished was a little different was the temperature probe being glued down and touching the cells. That's not a big deal, it probably will still work, but I believe that would allow for a more accurate temperature reading of the actual cells. EcoWorthy does make all kinds of other batteries and they do make a plastic case version of the same battery, but it's only slightly less in price. At the time of me filming this, uh, this full metal case 150 amp hour battery is $250, but be sure to uh, click the link down in the description to see if the prices ha have dropped since. Also, if there's any discounts available, I'll put that down uh, by the link. Uh, this battery does have a three-year warranty, and if you have any questions about this battery or need some support, I'll put a link to their Facebook group below where you can get the answers there. I would like to thank Eagle Worthy for sending me out this battery for my always honest review. And that wraps up this video. I really hope you enjoyed the battery review. Thanks for watching.